Good morning. My name is Martin. And my name is Dirkje, and this is the tribe of the fox. And so we are here now together uh, via a Zoom meeting, me and Martijn together, because we would like to talk to each other and to uh, have some reflections about uh, uh, the last period, uh, how we handle uh, all our things uh, around paganism and uh, all our experience we had. And uh, yeah, it was, it's nice to have a chat with each other about things. And uh, well, what time? Um, we did do some nice things last time, eh, last year. Uh, and uh, we did go to some nice places, vacant places in the Netherlands, because we are from the Netherlands and we are investigating things. Uh, we are experiencing things and we did do some trips. And I wonder, Martijn, uh, what was your uh, nicest trip from the last year? Well, I, I already think we can agree on that one. Uh, we have made several really nice field trips and we <coughs> made beautiful videos about them. Um, I think if I look back at the last period of time, our trip to the Tankenberg, that's in mm -hmm. the east of the Netherlands. Yeah, and I see already, I see you already nodding the action from yes, that was a nice <laughs> trip. <laughs> Yeah. So that is basically the east of the country, and we visited the Tankenberg, which is basically a temple, an old temple, or basically not an old temple. The temple is relatively new, but it's an old place of worship for the goddess Tamfana, because, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, as you regular viewers know, the tribe of the fox loves to give some attention to the lesser known lesser well-known deities and Tamfana, the goddess Tamfana, the goddess of the Tubantum, goddess of the Marsi. Um, yeah, it was really worthwhile visiting in the forest and it yeah. was elevated. It was not flat like the rest of the Netherlands and we had a great uh, experience in the forest and in the temple. So what do you think, Dirk? Yeah, the view, wasn't it? The view was so nice. And uh, I did not expect it uh, to be uh, that it was such a nice place. I did not yeah. expect that because, yeah, our, our pagan friends uh, in the Netherlands, they, they, all, they all talk about Tankenberg. And uh, yeah, it's yeah. not very close near where I live. So we had to drive, uh, no, not that far away, but uh, we had to drive for a while. And uh, I was overwhelmed by that place. Because of the energy, because of the beauty of that place. Um, and I did not expect, because they, they did build a, a little, yeah, kind of, yeah, temple-like building. So yeah, I thought, like well, dome. yeah, and I thought, well, that's fake or something. But when I was there, it, it really did not feel fake. It, it, felt, it felt so real and so... Yeah, the energy was so soft and, and feminine and actually a little bit sacred. Maybe that's uh, the good word for it. But what did you experience, uh, Martijn? Well, I noticed that Tamfana is a goddess with a very earthly um, energy because many people who are into spirituality, whatever that may be, they look mm -hmm. to higher realms and light beings and angels and blah, blah, blah. That's all right. If you want to do that, go ahead. But mm -hmm. Dirk and me, we experienced that the more, and we're going to talk about this later, the more earthly deities, they are actually the most spiritual experiences. And Tamfana is really a goddess who is friendly towards the humans. And the forest behind the temple had such a nice relaxing energy. And we were sitting there on a on a cut down tree. Yeah. And at, at a certain moment, a lot of people came. So then we left. But yeah, we had uh, yeah we had luck, wasn't it? We were there alone, and uh, yeah. <laughs> after a while, uh, more people visited the place. So yeah. it's quite known, and it, that's nice, eh? Because things are getting alive again, and that's good news, I think. The people visit more these places and are more aware of 
you know, uh, the, the faith of our uh, and the spirituality of our ancestors. And yeah, uh, especially, sorry, especially in case of Tamfana for us Dutch people, but also yes. especially also for the German people. Yeah. Um, Tamfana is very much a deity that that is important to reconnect with because that all happened on our part of the world, Northwestern Europe. Yeah, and uh, Tacitus uh, did mention her already in the yeah. first century. Uh, so, yeah, she is uh, a very known goddess, uh, yeah, as Martijn uh, told us, uh, uh, the Marsi and the Tubanta and, and, and all, all Germanic tribe, tribes uh, did, did honor her. And, uh, yeah, talking about deities and goddesses, uh, are there more goddesses you uh, had uh, new experiences with uh, last uh, year? Yeah, it's, it's nice that you mentioned the word goddesses because in, mm -hmm. in, in heathenry and in paganism, there are lots of goddesses, <laughs> I think even more than gods. Oh yeah, and, yeah, All right. Yeah, yeah. really. Uh, so I think this also goes for both of us because our experiences are often similar. Um, the iron wood, so that's a realm belonging to Jotunheim, and that's the realm ruled by Anger Boda. So not entire Jotunheim, but the, the dark forest. The dark forest, that's uh, the realm of Anger Boda. And that's a very misunderstood deity because there's not much known about her. Mm -hmm. So people are speculating a lot. Is she anti-cosmic? Does she want to destroy <laughs> uh, the cosmos, as some yeah. people say? Or is she a very protective, um, wolf-like deity that's on our side? There is not much known about her. But my experience with, with Anger Boda, and mm -hmm. we also made a video about it, our most successful at this moment, actually, uh, is that she is a very kind goddess, very protective, very, very mother-like in a warrior way. So it's definitely uh, not someone to mess around with. None of the gods and goddesses are, but yeah. this is a very warrior-like goddess, a very mother-like, very wolf-like. Uh, yeah. I think she's and, very and, interesting. And we did both do a trans journey yeah, to uh, Anger Boda. And, and we, uh, yeah, multiple times, and we did do that separate from each other. And then we did compare uh, our experiences. And uh, yeah, that's <laughs> very, uh, <laughs> you are laughing now. <laughs> yeah, but a lot of things are very, very similar. And we did not speak about uh, Anger Boda a lot before we did do the trans journey. No. And uh, yeah, we can talk a lot about that, that we uh, shared our experiences. And, and what you told me, was about the wolf energy, and uh, that was the same for me. Absolutely the same for me, the, the wolf energy. And um, what I did notice was that Angerboda was not a, a person, like a human person, but much, much, much bigger. Uh, Jotun is a, a giant, a giantess, but I did experience her more. Uh, yeah, it's so hard to to explain because it was more a being, mm -hmm. a huge being with, a, 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 for me, a mother-like energy. Yeah. I did not expect it because, yeah, the, the stories about Engeboda, you know, <laughs> people make up everything and maybe we do make up things as well. I don't know, but we did experience uh, things very differently. And uh, I felt, yeah, a kind of connection with her and, uh, and yeah, bigger than, than, than a lot of goddesses who are more human like. She, she, she felt like a, a mountain or something <laughs> to me. And uh, yeah, she's not very human like, indeed. No. Some deities are human like, this one definitely not. And yeah. she's the mother of a lot of important beings. Yeah. The, the mother-like aspect is, is extremely clear. She's the mother of Hell, who rules the realm of the dead. Fenris, who heralds the end of an era, so it's very important. 
Jura moon um, and more and more beings, yeah. <laughs> many more. Yeah, yeah. What I remember was that uh, uh, seeing. Yeah, I'm not going too deep in that kind of things because it's also a little bit personal. But uh, she let me know in a special kind of way that it's important to put my energy in myself. Yeah. Uh, when there is fear or uh, insecurities about things that are going on in life. Uh, and that I still carry with me. Uh, mm. Do you have the same, Martijn? Or do you have a yeah. different uh, feeling? No, because we live in a crazy era at the moment. Um, so I'm not going to talk about politics here or society, but in my opinion, uh, it's the end of an era right now. And that's mm -hmm. very natural, you know. Everything comes and goes, and our era is almost closed. That's how I feel it. And yeah, yeah. Hunger Boda gives a very protective uh, feeling. You have, to trust your, yeah, yeah. you have to trust yourself, like you said, Dirk. You trust yourself, turn mm -hmm. inwards, do the right thing, and don't fear uh, what is thrown at us. Yeah. And you had other experience eh, with uh, a goddess in your surrounding, isn't it? Yeah, uh, I still need to make a video about that, actually. Yeah? yeah. Okay. Because that's also a very, very unknown goddess, eh? Tafania. Aofania. 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 Is it I not? You just combined two goddesses, Tafania <laughs> and Aofania. You made one of them. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I had a name in my mind, but uh, yeah, that's, oh, that's also yeah. a special story that you uh, yeah. you mentioned about her. So uh, yeah. Because well, I think it's 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 important to to search in your own uh, surroundings yeah, for your own nature spirits and uh, your own goddesses from your own land and where you live and you had contact with with her with Alfania Alfania yeah, <laughs> yeah Alfania <laughs> it's it's a very difficult name because um, if you see the name being written down then it's still hard to pronounce it's it's a difficult mm -hmm. one. Yeah. But I think it's funny that you mentioned Tamfana and Aufania in one name because they're both very earth-bound, earth-like deities, mm -hmm. like we said in the beginning of our conversation. Yeah. So Aufania, who is she? She is very unknown. And again, we are speaking about Northwestern Europe because that's what the tribe of the fox is all about. Now, in Northwestern Europe, it was very important to, um, the triple goddess was very important here. So mm -hmm. with a Latin word they're called matrone, but in the Norse religion, the Norse spirituality, uh, they are called the Norns. But you also have Lady Aufania, that's also a triple goddess. Um, although, you know, triple goddesses, I think it's extremely hard to really understand what they are. They are a huge yeah. mystery. Yeah, yeah you agree. <laughs> so, yeah, Derek, you already said that I discovered this in my own environment, in my own uh, part of the country. So I live in the west of the Netherlands, which is the most densely populated part mm -hmm. of our nation. And the interesting thing is, yes, you can go to places like the Solse Gat, where Derek lives mm -hmm. nearby, those are well-known hidden places. But in your own surroundings, you can discover places that has a very special energy and where the nature beings and the deities are more easy to connect with. And there's this piece of nature not far from where I live. There are cities all around it. All kinds of cities are around it. And you can see it, even the cities. But it's still nature. Swamp. Swamp-like, very wet. And I like to sit at the water there. I have this little yeah. collapsible chair with three legs. And then I sit down and I start singing. That's called Galder. In, uh, in, that's actually a Norse word. So in, I start singing for Lady Aufania. And I cannot see her as a being. 
but I can feel her presence and she is very hard to connect with. She is not like a human being, hello. She is not like that. Neolenia is more like that, but not Ahuvania. And the she's a lady of the swamp and she is yeah. very earth-like, very powerful, and even to an extent that I think she will play a role in the end of this era. Yeah, okay. So she, yeah, she yeah. can also create, but she can also destroy. Yeah. So that's the image that I have. But yesterday mm -hmm. I was visiting her and I was very tired after a long way, long week of work. Yeah. And I really, really relaxed with her. And I gave offerings and I was just standing there at the water. I forgot my collapsible chair. Yeah. And she has a really nice energy, but pretty badass as well. Yeah. And talking about offerings, yeah, that is, uh, uh, I found out that giving uh, little offerings uh, make makes the bond stronger yeah. because you you give something and not because uh, the goddess wants things from you but you you give respect if you give something because when you visit your your mother-in-law or, or for instance your aunt or something <laughs> and you bring flowers yeah, or you visit a friend you bring something and uh, giving offerings makes another connection with the goddesses and uh, yeah, it is still a, uh, an issue of growing, growing into hedonry and uh, we, we read books and we also know a lot about uh, theories and, and facts and uh, we do some investigations uh, and we do uh, experience, we experience things. And uh, no, I think we did both grow, don't you think, in a lot of things? And in what things did you grow uh, last year? Yeah, that's a very good question because we all know that in paganism and hedonry, nothing is static. Everything mm -hmm. is evolving constantly. So also the knowledge of us individual persons. And what I noticed, and maybe that also, no, I don't think, maybe it has to do with the crazy times we're living in, but um, mm -hmm. I'm pretty fearless, actually. I become more and more fearless. Okay. I'm more and more centered in myself. Um, and what I understood is by disconnecting with that which I really dislike, and by connecting with what I really like, that's like a form of magic because your thoughts actually shape the world. They shape yeah. the world around you. Yeah. And then you start to attract people mm -hmm. um, that are like-minded and you get opportunities that you can grab or let, let them just go by, but you get opportunities and then you become less and less dependent on that which you don't like because society is not going that great at the moment, but mm -hmm. I don't seem to be really bothered by it. And some people are really stressed by the way society goes. Yeah, yeah. I really grew into that trusting on yourself and your ancestors and your deities. And yeah, yeah, yeah that's your own very, power. yeah. Very, very important what you are explaining now, uh, Martijn. Yeah, thank you for that, because I think that's uh, also inspiring. And that uh, uh, our ancestors and our uh, uh, spirituality can help us more than ever. It's, it's more important than ever uh, to connect with, with our ancestors and our, our own roots. And uh, yeah, we have learned on school, and you told me also, Martijn, that we have learned on school that, uh, that our ancestors and, our, and the, the tribes before Christian uh, times are very uh, barbaric and, and, <laughs> and wild. And yeah, and it's not true. And that's good to know because, uh, <clears throat> because your ancestors are, are your value. <clears throat> you have to know where you come from. <coughs> Sorry. 
had to to uh, you have to know where you come from to value who you really are now and yeah. uh, that's more important than ever i think and when we visited the uh, museum in leiden uh, yeah uh, how do you translate it in english the museum of uh, antiquities old... antiquities yes the museum <laughs> of old stuff the museum yeah. of old stuff <laughs> Old stuff, <laughs> but, but there they did uh, uh, excavate a lot of things in the Netherlands and, and also Germany and Belgium. But the, the mu museum is about the Netherlands, and and then you see how really really sophisticated uh, the people were before uh, our era. They uh, yeah. wonderful jewelry they found and pottery and gold and and stones and very. Um, yeah, sophisticated yeah, and yeah. also fabric the fabrics are also woven with colors and all that kind of things and people were um, honoring the dead and and yeah even even thousands and thousands of years ago already so the, yeah how can they say that people were wild and and and, and silly and dumb and and walking on on bare feet uh, <laughs> as a wild man through the forest because that's not true people had their spirituality people had their the art and the art was really really nice it's it's very hard to to uh, copy uh, some kind of jewelry uh, these days yeah, so um, yeah and i think uh, realizing that makes me more proud of uh, uh, yeah uh, who I am and proud of my ancestors and that also gives strength because now these days we are all uh, everything has to be mixed together and and everything has to be uh, all from other cultures and I think that weakens us to be honest uh, we we are also having our own culture and uh, what I learned uh, is, is what you said Martijn yeah, to, to connect with, uh, with yourself uh, and to feel what is real for you or not. That's also what I learned. And um, yeah, I am investigating more about magic. Ah. That's, that's how you said, uh, you, you said, you explained to, to me uh, how you handle magic in uh, your mindset and thinking about your mindset. That's the same for me. And um, I try to practice that in, in also smaller things, you know, um, and not by doing rituals anymore. No. That is, I, I, did, I did grow in that because when I was younger, <laughs> I was into the Wicca <laughs> no. for a short while. And then, and then you do rituals and that kind of things. And yeah, that's, that, that is not how I do it now because I do it more with a mindset and it's going very quickly. Yeah, we spoke about some things that are, if we are going to do a trans journey, sometimes we need a few hours to get into the trance. But it's going quicker because when I sit down and I have the right mindset and, I'm, and then it is there. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I, I heard you explain the, the same. So I think that I, am gro uh, I grew uh, in that kind of um, things doing trans journeys and focus control your your mind uh, control how i feel about things so uh, yeah yeah you're right about that because uh, mindset is, is extremely important yeah yeah but to come back to our ancestors that we were also talking about uh, mm -hmm. You talked about the museum and, and how beautiful the objects were that these people, these, these, these Germanic and also pre-Germanic people made in yeah. Europe. And it was beautiful. But also, our ancestors had a very complicated uh, view of how the world and the cosmos worked. And I made a video about this, about the nine worlds. But they also, mm -hmm. I made also a video about how they perceive the human being. Uh, and the parts that make up oh, yeah. human feeling. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. So these people were extremely sophisticated in their thinking and in their artwork. Yeah. 
Yeah. And there's another important thing to be said about the ancestors. And that's not just that the ancestors live on in you, but the ancestors also know what you are doing, mm -hmm. how you are living and who you are. They know it and they appreciate it if you do it right. And they back you up. Um, I had some strange experiences with this over the years. And I know the ancestors are there. I know they are still connected with us. So yeah. that's, that's extremely important. Yeah. Yeah. And, and uh, I, I am laughing because I remember when we were in a museum, Martijn, uh, we were at the entrance and you were talking about the, the Nehalenia altars. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You, you wanted to go upstairs. To the, <laughs> the Helenia altars, so I'm like, oh, now I'm going there because, and we were in, in the, in the yeah. section of the pharaohs, yeah, the Egyptian mummies and all that kind of things. It was so interesting, but you are waiting to go <laughs> upstairs. To, it was so yeah. funny. I didn't wait. I just walked. I just and walked then upstairs. suddenly, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> to, to the altars yeah. because that was also unbelievable, uh, nice to finally see them in real life, yeah, the yeah. Nehelenias, the ne Nehelenia from the goddess Nehelenia, and they found uh, votive stones in, in the sea, in the North Sea, yeah. in the south of the Netherlands, and they did uh, pull them out of the sea, and uh, they are all dedicated to uh, Nehelenia, and they are in the museum, and that was also a nice experience, wasn't it? Yeah, and I think it's very nice what you just said, that we were on the Egyptian uh, Egyptian or Roman part of the museum. Yeah, maybe Roman or... <laughs> and, just, yes. and just wanting to go up to Neolenia, because yeah. you know what? We always look, uh, not we, but many people look towards other cultures for wisdom, and I appreciate other cultures very much. How, I, I don't want to put any culture down. I'm not going to do this because I appreciate other cultures too. But we should really, really look at our own wisdom because we have it in abundance. It just needs to be uh, rediscovered by the people. And Dirk and mm -hmm. me are doing this for a number of years now. And it's yeah. really, really nice to see our own uh, ancestral wisdom instead of always looking at India, China, South America. Yeah. It's not necessary. We all have it ourselves. Yeah. We have it here in yeah, Northwestern I, Europe. I completely agree with you. And also because you mentioned the, the nine layers of the self, yeah. the nine parts of the self that's going deep and that is not yeah. less wisdom than uh, Buddhism or something. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, so that was... Also a kind of uh, new new view for me as well. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, we did do uh, so many nice things. Uh, I did enjoy it uh, all the time that we uh, visited places. And uh, do you remember the Udle Meer? Yeah, that was really nice with the Griepke monster. <laughs> yeah, it's who also... lived in the lake. Yeah. <laughs> that, uh, yeah, that was also funny that you were talking <laughs> about the kind of uh, a scary uh, water spirit, and then you were in front of the lake, being a little bit scared of the <laughs> of the water spirit. Yeah, it's also nice to have a little bit of fun, but it was yeah. also very informative. Uh, yeah. And and the Udle Meer, that is a place in the Netherlands. Um, yeah, you can check out uh, for our listeners uh, a video we made about that. Uh, it's it's. Um, nice place that is also ancient and there are a lot of legends around that place and we all also talked about uh, about your mutkande yeah about the world snake we did do talk yeah. about that too and about thor with his hammer <laughs> it's also yeah. a, a legend uh, about thor and about uh, it's it's a ring shaped uh, area Fortress, uh, it's like a kind of fortress. fortress. Yeah, but but very very old. I think at least more than thousand years old. I think I don't yeah. remember exactly the the time. But the legend was that Thor hits his hammer on the bread oven 
of a giant, yeah. and then uh, that make uh, then the the ring shaped area uh, uh, exists. So that that's the legend about that. We all we also talked about Jormunkander. Uh, yeah, yeah. That makes sense because there's a huge lake near that fortress, and yeah. Jormunkander is an aquatic aquatic uh, being. Mm -hmm. the legends. And we were just busy uh, one week before with trying to contact Jermun Gander. Yeah. And, uh, so we were we just made a video about that as well when we were at that lake, the Uddeler Lake. So that yeah. was really nice. Yeah, and I, I remember that uh, uh, Jermun Gander was completely different than I thought it was. Because snake-like like beings are always uh, doomed and, and uh, uh, devilish and uh, yeah, uh, from the view from Christianity. But the snake, uh, yeah, I remember that was for me, was it as more as a cyclic existence. Yeah. Uh, you, you, you get uh, born and, and then you grow up and then die and then again in the cycle of life and death. And yeah. Uh, yeah, it was a kind of symbol for that cyclic existence. Yeah, and snakes, yeah. they also shed their skin every time. Oh, yeah. Their old skin just goes away, and then they're basically like a fresh new snake again. Yeah. And that's uh, also very symbolic, of course. Uh, but it's, yeah, uh, Jurmungander is um, definitely, there's nothing human in in Jurmungander, like mm -hmm. for instance, deities like Neyalenia or Odin, they have something human in them. But Jurmungander, it's in a league of its own. It's, it's very different. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's nice for our listeners to uh, check out this, that video as well. And uh, yeah, we, we try to make videos to enjoy ourselves, but also to help other people uh, to find out what they want with their roots and uh, what they want with paganism. Because, uh, yeah, there are a lot of different views on that, isn't it? If you check out the YouTube uh, videos that other people make, everybody has his own views on, on paganism. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. And we try to help out people that want to discover things that are really from from our land, for, from our country, not especially the Netherlands, but from, from whole Europe, eh? Northwestern Europe. And uh, yeah, I hope that uh, my wish is that we can help people out to find their own uh, way of, of experiencing paganism, eh? to go out in nature and to believe in themselves uh, to honor also the ancestors and, and their own uh, blood. Yeah. And what do you think, Martijn, that people can learn from us? And of course, we can also learn from other people. Well, yeah, I, I'm very careful with that because we, we are talking to people from our own perspective and our own experience. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. You know, freedom is everything, according exactly. to us in hedonism. Yeah. Yeah. So you have also hedon, hedons and pagans who still have a Christian mindset of wanting to expand their, their mm -hmm. spirituality to other people. We yeah. don't do this. We just make videos. And if you enjoy them and if it inspires you, then it's okay. Yeah. That's and, a good word, inspiring. Yeah. It's not teaching. Yeah. It's, it's more inspiring. Yeah, because we, you should also, and we also made a video about it, uh, pagans and heathens don't get fooled. And in that video, we, oh, warn, yeah. we warn against organizations who, who have people who call themselves priests or vitkis or priestesses or room <laughs> masters or whatnot. Uh, yeah. Please do your own research. Please make your own experience and talk mm -hmm. to people who also do the same. And be aware of people who want to expand 
hedonism or paganism, just like the Christians and other Abrahamic uh, religions have done. Yeah. Because it's not about convincing people. This has to come from you. And you have to be a freedom-loving person that wants to connect with his ancestors. And that's up to you to do that and to get inspired by other people. But don't just buy into other people's dogmas and don't let them have positions of power over you. Uh, mm -hmm. That's not the right way. It's about freedom. It's about being independent and wise and think for yourself. That's so, so, so important. And that's exactly. why Gillikin and me, we are not teachers and we are not shamans and we are not whatever. We are just enthusiast people from the Netherlands sharing with you what yeah. we do. And then you can agree or disagree. That's all up to you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and also uh, we learn uh, ourselves as well because we read books and uh, yeah, there are a lot of theories about things and uh, yeah. old, writings, old writings are maybe more clear, but also influenced by Christianity and by uh, people's view from that time. Yeah. So yeah, that's also yeah, what you said, Martijn, it's very important to do own investigations. And yeah. also uh, experience. It is working with the mind and with the heart together, I think. And uh, yeah, you are completely right if you talk about freedom. <laughs> freedom is, I think, now more than, than ever very important for me personally. Uh, yeah, because we are not priests indeed. We do not carry ropes and, and makeups and uh, <laughs> black, uh, black nails. Completely, yeah, we do sometimes. <laughs> we do sometimes if you do <laughs> a kind of trans journey. <laughs> uh, this is just for practical purposes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, sometimes we do, but it's not uh, to go out and, 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 and uh, show, show yourself out. Look, I'm a princess or a priestess of, or a goddess. Yeah, maybe I am. <laughs> I'm, just <Who> knows? <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, but uh, yeah, as you told uh, Martijn, we're just a bunch of friends trying to find a our own way and, and yeah, also learning uh, from things because sometimes I am convinced that uh, things are how they are, how they are, but then later I think, oh no, it is it is different. So. Yeah, we are all moving. We are moving yeah. and experiencing and learning and trying to inspire other people. Yeah, we yeah. also have a, a website. <clears throat> we have a Dutch uh, uh, web, website where we put uh, nice things. And uh, we have a Telegram channel that's in English. That's Tribe of the Fox. So, uh, yeah, going on with this kind of stuff, isn't, isn't it? Or do you have other plans, uh, Martijn? <laughs> no, no, just carry on. I have new videos in my mind. They have not okay. materialized yet. And All actually, right. to be quite honest, I'm quite surprised about the number of people who follow us on Telegram and YouTube mm -hmm. and the number of views that we have and the, the amount of nice comments that we get from people. Because yeah. we started this without any goal. We didn't want to have a huge YouTube channel. We just wanted to make videos because we like what we do. And we thought, yeah, yeah let's see if somebody wants to watch it. And now people do want to watch it. And that, that's quite amazing because we speak very specifically about things that many other YouTube channels don't do, like shamanic journeying. And we tell a lot of personal stuff and still yeah. people want to follow us. Mm -hmm. They follow not us, but our channel, because you cannot follow us because we don't want students. We are not yeah. teachers. Yeah. Okay. It's a nice uh, yeah. closure, I think. Because, yeah, uh, and we have to also thank the people who subscribed and who watch our video. So two thumbs up and thank you yeah. very much, folks. Thanks. Really great. Yeah. 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 Thank you for uh, hanging out with us again. And uh, we hope to see you uh, in the next time.
And a lot of things are coming uh, coming your way. Oh, yeah. They do. Okay. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye.